So there's going to be now Juho Saarinen and Tatu Aalto, and this is about personal development from the tester to project manager, lead developer, Selenium library, and these kind of teams. So please, Juho, say it is yours. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> At least this microphone is working. So, as mentioned, I'm Juha Saarinen. I work at the, currently at EFICODE, but more about that during the presentation. So, I try to present my, as mentioned, growth story from starting uh, the first experience with Robot Framework and how ending up keeping this presentation here. Yeah, so, that's me. And this, let's say, uh, story starts at 2007 when I started at Capgemini uh, as a consultant. Before that, I was made some manual testing things uh, at Radiolini and Elisa, but kind of, as mentioned, there's two years of that, but that wasn't really about automation. And the 2007 itself yet wasn't because I joined Capgemini at the uh, end of the year. So the first experience with test automation came at 2008, and those who has been at the industry, let's say, longer time, know that there was uh, rational tools for testing uh, version control and also automated testing, and IBM bought that, and then there was IBM rational tools. So, first experience with IBM rational functional tester, uh, where I also made this kind of fancy word certification, but basically went course about that and made some tries. It wasn't really so nice in automated testing sense because all, for example, the locators were based on the uh, Java-based object map that was created when the user first time went through things. And thinking of that and version control and multiple users and changing UI, you, I think you see nothing else but problems there. Of course, for the business people and the not so experienced users, it looked nice because you just everything was known already. So it was just uh, selecting things and making clicks. And also some tries with Selenium uh, IDE uh, with the Firefox, uh, which I think it's currently exists still, but haven't used it. Maybe let's say haven't used it since. So <laughs> it has kind of forgotten. But then, moving forward, at 2010, I, uh, well, the workplace changed to society, but the thing was that it's still the same group, so just as a, for as an old employee to uh, the uh, salary slip contain different name, but basically the share price that was affected was still the same. But one nice thing about that change was that there was uh, uh, better uh, possibilities and more possibilities related to automated testing. As you see here, only things 2008, only a couple of things. Then 2009, just manual testing stuff, learning how to be consultant. And then 2010, and the change of the name on the payment slip. And also, first experiences with the robot framework. And well, there's the old logo because I'm talking about old things. The new logo might come later. And then there was also this other, other guy uh, called Hudson. So basically the first experience with the robot framework also already included the uh, usage of the uh, CI server to run those tests. So the, those tests were really, in a way, automation, not just some, peop some person opens things and runs those locally and they are not, it's not taught how those can be run at a non-interactive way, let's say. And also some learnings that are still uh, kind of uh, remembered and told many times, even today, uh, that when checking the, or using the browsers, those should be closed, and it should be sure that those are closed, because when for example, Windows laptop has, has around 50 Firefox open. That laptop is quite jammed. 
and that happened many times, but luckily the CI server was si sitting at the uh, laptop next to me, so it was quite easy to just get battery off and get things starting again. <clears throat> and yeah, the first experience of course were, were with the old format in a way that the test case were written at the TSV tab separated values because it was nice to edit those files at the Excel. So basically the IDE for robot at that point was Excel. Then moving forward, uh, 2011, so year after uh, getting known the robot at all, uh, I already started to make some simple libraries and also use data-driven tests. Uh, actually, it went in a way that the specification for the application that was tested specified the uh, navigation menus from the Excel. So when the Excel was loaded to application, the navigation was created, and the same Excel was then used to uh, test that those navigations are really there, the keys are okay, the uh, special char characters are converted uh, as should, etc. But that required making the first own library for the uh, robot framework to read that Excel and pass the values and also make some other uh, kind of simple things, but uh, not so simple things in the robot syntax, easier to make with Python. And the Jenkins came along also, so at that time there was this uh, Jenkins Hudson thing. And about those libraries, some examples. So uh, the XLRD uh, was used to read the Excel library, and as you see, those who know Finnish, the thing was that uh, it was tried to emphasize that, hey, this is something that business people can use. So things were made in Finnish. So it's nice to read the robot uh, test, uh, test scripts that say clearly that uh, bring the column from table in Finnish so that people who are reading it doesn't have to understand English. Of course, now it sounds quite strange to say that, hey, we are making test automation, uh, we are working at the IT, and there is no need to speak or understand English, but that was the case at the time. And other quite simple things also, passing things from the, uh, from the text strings and uh, making the date passing to uh, match that formats are, uh, are aligned and the comparison of the dates is uh, possible. Then moving forward, uh, the first experience with GitHub came uh, two years later than the first experience with the uh, robot framework. So, and also, it's nice that GitHub has the history of the issues. So the first ever issue I have created was against Selenium library. And this is not typo, it was Selenium library at that point. Uh, and there was issues with the on-chain events and other, uh, actually at the same time there was a couple of other issues related to those uh, JavaScript uh, on changes and uh, some other events that should be triggered, but were not triggered or were triggered too many times. Uh, also, the big change that was actually also the questions before about this Chiton, that I, after that basically I have used the robot framework almost purely with Java and through the Maven because of the dependency management. There are, at least at that point, this wasn't so nice to handle the uh, Python dependencies and also for example, database connections. The drivers were much easier to use with Java. And also it was easy that there's just one POM file and everything works when you run things. Uh, and because the applications that I was testing at that time were based on Wicket 6, the JavaScript, uh, I had to kind of get to know JavaScript more and also, that relates to the first issue created to GitHub. Uh, and then about the automated testing itself, it kind of, uh, uh, I kind of get to realize this kind of idea that when doing the automated tests during the development, 
it's good to have the environment that is completely under your own control. So, for example, the application using SAP integrations, the integration should be mocked out using email servers. There's no reason to create email addresses to external email servers because you can just put the in-memory uh, server running and handle things like things with that. And that also kind of uh, uh, allowed me to learn something about how to really configure the applications uh, so that the, when deploying, the settings are different, or when running locally, the settings are different. And also allowed to be, uh, discuss with the developers that what kind of settings need to be configured. Because some of the settings were like, yeah, the database is always at deployed environments Oracle, but for the uh, local testing, yeah, there's no reason to start Oracle XEs all the time. Uh, one nice thing with this uh, kind of um, uh, getting the uh, server run in the environment you exactly know was the uh, kind of failure testing. So, for example, if SAP is down, the application should, of course, handle that kind of situation. But thinking about company that has a single SAP environment, it might be quite hard to tell the IT, hey, shut down the SAP now, and yeah, now can I bring it up? Or please provide this kind of error message from the SAP so we can check that things are uh, handled correct in our code. So, so yeah, kind of that's that's more about the how test automation should be done, not really robot thing, uh, but because robot was used to make the automation, it can be kind of presented here nicely. Then some uh, evolvement of the user also, uh, I got got my Master of Science in 2013 uh, from University of Helsinki. And yeah, now the big thing, I wasn't studying I, uh, computer science, I was studying physics, and my minors were mathematics and theoretical physics. So uh, some studies of computer science, but not so, not enough to have kind of any uh, even upper part of that. Uh, on, well, yeah, I, of course, I have to admit that my uh, this um, specialty was uh, computational science, so coding with Fortran was one big thing, but that's not really maybe to the current or even that day's uh, enterprise application thing. There, I haven't met any enterprise Fortran things, sadly. Then again, as you see, there is one year missing from the robot kind of involvement. So things that were mentioned previously were just used and uh, tried to be improved and tried to be understand more deeply. Uh, but then there come this uh, also mentioned previous uh, presentation, the desktop application uh, automation. Uh, with when at that point, same time, I was try to experience this uh, Microsoft solutions, which were, of course, Windows-based, but they were quite nice. But then it was, we wanted to have something that was, uh, uh, let's say, OS agnostic, or worked, at least it should work in different OSs, fine. So SQL came, and at the time it was used just with quite horrific uh, batch scripts that created the uh, class batch on the run. Also, Angular testing, quite, uh, let's say, popular topic at the uh, Robocon, uh, sorry, uh, Robot Frameworks user uh, list at the Google. Uh, for me, I don't, I, all of those things have been like, okay, I don't, I don't see what is the point of asking special things related to Angular because that's just web testing. That's my, my opinion. Uh, also made some new libraries related to this, uh, this uh, SQLy, so library to read EXIF data of photos, so where those are taken. Uh, also the Excel library that I wrote 2011. Yeah, small error there. Uh, 2011 was revisited and added for example comparison of two Excel sheets there, cell by cell. 
and also CSV library that made basically the same thing, but just with CSVs. And at this time, the English was already used, so it's not, it wasn't so annoying to read uh, the test cases, which f said some steps at Finnish and some steps in English. So a bit nicer, uh, nicer thing. And one thing to notice, those who don't know the EXIF data, thing is that the uh, location is not stored as a decimals. It's stored as a degrees, which are quite annoying to compare with each other. So that's why it also contains this uh, mathematics to calculate a decimal presentation of the coordinates from the uh, degree uh, presentation of the coordinates. And there was also a ready-made uh, library to Python to do that. The biggest thing at that point was that the library, there's multiple of those libraries to find the library that was requiring least amount of external dependencies because handling of those was quite annoying, especially uh, when moving the test from machine to other. And that library was the one that was only, it could be easily included to version control. So, then, uh, before 2015, all the libraries I made were this kind of small thing included at the same repository as the, uh, as the test cases itself, made with Python. And 2015, the libraries that I started to make, those were made with Java. And one big thing was that to make the library for the IBM MQ. The first, of course, that IBM doesn't provide those libraries to interact with the IBM MQ publicly. So those, all of those things luckily were at the customer's internal nexus. So the library was possible to be made. And yeah, it was quite basically just quite simple wrapping of the existing performance test used uh, Java methods uh, to the robot framework keywords. Just some kind of making things look nicer in a way. Also, uh, before this, the um, tests were run by, uh, quite purely with Maven, and the Cradle came in 2015 also, to my knowledge. And the nice thing with Cradle was that it was able to download the browser and web drivers automatically, so there was no need to tell users that download this thing, uh, put this thing on the path, etc. Um, also, still, even though the, uh, this uh, MQ library was written in Java, some Python libraries were written uh, with uh, other uh, automate, uh, automation doers at the customer. So, for example, uh, calculating of the valid bank dates and generating the, these uh, EBA standard payment uh, packs and camped uh, payment messages, which are XML. Those originally were created at the robot framework with the loops, and <clears throat> well, it worked. Problem was that it just took, I'd say, ages. So I think the difference was about that the time on the robot framework and loops took around 10 to 20 times more than doing the same thing at the Python directly. And also the readability of the Python was, of course, much much, much clearer. But that was kind of a learning process. First, because it was easy to write the things at the robot framework loops, it was written there. Then, and it was also after those were made, it was known how things should be generated. So it was easy to just move it to the uh, more efficient platform. And because the test cases were already working, we had a nice way to know that, okay, we our generation is really working now because the tests are still passing. Then, moving forward, uh, even though Java libraries were used, uh, basically after 2012, uh, custom Java libraries were used 2015, the first public, my own public library, uh, 
uh, was uh, published in 2016. And that was actually related to this 2014 SQL usage. So uh, remote SQL library that offered the possibility to use SQL without copying different uh, fi files to ClassPath manually, but putting everything inside single uh, Java package. And the other big thing that I all also were able to use inside the robot framework organization uh, at the GitHub uh, was that the releases and snapshots were automatically pushed to the Maven Central uh, with the Travis CI. So basically every time there was something to the master or developer brands, uh, things were pushed to the uh, as a snapshots and when they were tag created, the release was pushed automatically and no, no wondering where the PGP keys are or if the environment at my machine is okay or if the, if the release is made kind of without testing because all of those steps were enforced at the Travis. Also, I adopted my first library uh, from Thomas Jaspers, uh, which was Robot Framework DP library. Basically, I think that the on, only changes to the library I have made since were to make the publishing to the Maven Central, so it's much easier to use when things are publicly available uh, you know, as a binary instead of just source code. Then, next year, 2017, I moved to Efficode, where I, as you guessed from the first slide, and well, my hoodie still am. But that wasn't the only change. There was also uh, also robot framework related things that I made. Uh, second library adoption at the time called Robot Framework Selenium Library 2, uh, Selenium 2 Library uh, Java uh, from Marcus. And quite soon after that, actually, the Adoption happened already when Selenium 3 was announced, so the library re rename happened quite soon also, so the Selenium version changes are not affecting the library name, which was quite annoying. Also, the version naming was changed to uh, reflect the Selenium version in use. Then uh, created the HCP request library, uh, which was based on the request library because Again, Java version mani uh, dependency management is much nicer, so it was easier to just say to use as a thesis bomb file and run the tests and having everything coming uh, from the uh, Nexus or Maven Central. And it was using the uh, Apache HCP client. Also, as can be guessed, the REST testing with Robot Framework were touched at that year. And all, then new uh, JavaScript framework, so React first testing with React happened at that time, but again, it's nothing fancy, it's just web testing. <clears throat> 10, 2018, some more personal kind of uh, development, a couple of uh, AWS uh, certificates and one uh, Google Cloud Platform certificates. So. Evolvement also as a kind of user, user point of view. And then 2018, uh, just learning about uh, OpenShift and the, how to make browser testing with Selenium uh, library and Selenium grid. And also created one library called uh, status update library, which makes the robot tests automatically to upload the results to Chira and HPALM and uh, X-Ray also. Uh, it was quite, quite okay and it was used at the customer also. Then Java FX library, so getting to know other libraries. And the big thing that I became maintainer of Robot Framework Maven plugin and introduced this automatic releasing that was mentioned earlier. And then we are this year. So first 
ever conference talk uh, personally. And yeah, there's still much of this year uh, left. So uh, there is already some ideas how to uh, improve uh, the robot framework library creation with Java and keep up maintaining all the new things and keep participating in the open source projects. And yeah, three times has went during the some time of this to golf, taekwondo, and working with computers, as might have been guessed already. And some tips for the evolving, evolving user. And yeah, so let's say some, some people say that this is, some of these things are academic interest, but that's not the bad thing if the things are getting also same time uh, to, be, to get done. But if working that when wor uh, at the work, you can keep up things and learn new things, I think that's not ne necessarily going to happen, or at least the skills are not kept up. So also free time usage is required. But that's, that's it for me. Thank you, and if you have some questions. Okay, uh, thank you. Any questions? Out of all that, what was the, your favorite thing that you just really enjoyed the most in, in working with the robot framework? Uh, I think the innovate the simplicity and the easy a uh, kind of easy way to extend things, as those Java, uh, sorry, the Python libraries I mentioned, those, most of those were th this kind of under 10 lines, and it was very easy to write things, and kind of same time, without kind of even realizing or knowing, learning what uh, Python is about, what, or you know, on the other hand, what Java is about. So I think that simplicity and kind of simple extensibility have been those biggest thing that have kind of moved me from this uh, uh, 2007 to here. <laughs> uh, hi, you have mentioned using Java uh, uh, for creating uh, some uh, uh, Python, uh, uh, excuse me, some uh, robot libraries, right? Yes. Do you think that having a robot API in Java, right, uh, would help you? Uh, actually, I mean, there is this uh, JavaLib core which has some of those things, but that's actually the thing also that I had this uh, uh, mentioned. So, ideas to improve the library creation. So, uh, but but big thing about how about these upcoming things is, of course, what happens to Chiton, for example. And that's, I think, something that requires some discussion and thoughts also. But if the project is dead, the project is dead. <laughs> OK, thank you. Uh, very interesting uh, kind of quote story from a robot framework user to starting creating simple libraries, as you saw from those examples. If you, t if you are a robot framework user who haven't, hasn't yet written libraries, you saw from examples, it's not very complicated. It's easy to get started. But if you are not uh, not careful, you may end up maintaining big libraries. So, 